So again, I would just like to repeat that we'll be discussing the classification basics, the heading and subheading structure, part one and two. So to begin with, uh, we'll first start with the subtopic identification. Uh, these are um, not really my personal uh, perspectives on how to really identify or classify goods, but this is from what I have learned also from the uh, during the college days and uh, with my proper review before the board exam. So, in one of the uh, in one of the review centers that I have attended, this is how the like to share us on how to identify or classify goods. So first, we have to know what is it or what the product it is. For example, is it animal, is it mineral, or is it machine? You first have to understand what is the general description or uh, general description of the product that you are going to classify, okay? The next, you'll ask yourself what is the characteristics or what are the characteristics of this product for example the weight material composition the dimensions and the power rating because as you can see in the tariff nomenclature there are some specific harmony system codes there that sets forth um a specific uh description or category for example um, there's a subheading there that provides 100 watts for a specific machine. There's also description in there that provides um, uh, mixture, for example, with chocolate as a part of a mixture of the product that you are describing. Okay. Then after knowing what are the characteristics of the product, you'll again you'll now have to ask yourself what are the functions or intended application of this product for example is it for pure bread breeding for domestic or for commercial use uh, the example here is common for for um, animals or sorry for live animals wherein the description provides either for uh, for breeding or not then there's also um, common on the plants where the description provides if it's if the seeds is for planting or for consumption okay so although you already identified the 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 description on the fourth digit level there are additional description under the subheading level up to the eight digit level Okay. The next, you ask yourself, under what condition is it important? Is it frozen in rolls, in coils, or disassembled? These are just examples of, of the condition uh, segment. Okay. For the frozen, it's common for food processed products because on the Harmony system, I think there are three. I know there are five, but I'll just name a few. There are there is chilled there is fresh and there is frozen for uh processed for products and unprocessed products food products sorry then for rolls in coils uh this is an example of the description for industrial goods like for uh steel steel uh steel products or iron okay then i had i just added the category on the part of identification the uh, on understanding the rules of origin origin because it's important to note when you are already actually uh, using the classification rules and identifying the import duty rates applicable for such product that you are classifying so after having these questions these four questions in your mind you also have to understand the rules of origin or application of import duty rates. But these rules of origin, we will discuss on the part three of the tutorials. So after you identify the proper HS codes, you'll then proceed to the next step, 
which is identifying what duty rate is applicable. Diyan na papasok yung, is it most favored nation, which is MFN applicable to all WTO members, or you'll apply a preferential free trade uh, agreement where you'll, you'll, uh, you'll identify what FTAs you are trying to apply, then what duty rate is applicable, along with the set rules also if it is applicable. Okay? But we'll discuss that later on in, in part 3 of these tutorials. Any questions so far? EJ, Stephen, and sorry, uh, is it Ruel? Ruel. Um, yeah, any questions so far in this first slide? No, sir. None so far, po. Okay. Uh, I encourage the viewers to also uh, uh, put a comment on their respective platform if you have questions so that we can clarify as early as now so we don't have to get back to the previous slides later. Okay. So let's now move on to familiarization. I mentioned this before, last week uh, that it's also important to familiarize yourself on the, the book itself, on how the book is organized. Kasi syempre, kapag nag-flip ka ng book, at least you already have an idea where to go in an instant rather than having to go through the books like it's the first time that you open the book. Okay, you'll experience that one if you are not, uh, if you are not used to opening the book. Kasi kapag lagi mo siyang ginagamit, you will already have an idea. Minsan nga, ano, as you flip the book, minsan kakapain mo na agad kung some chapter ka na agad pupunta. So you don't have to go uh, to the table of contents already because you are already familiar. And that really means a lot because that saves a lot of time. Okay. I think I mentioned last week that it's important for you to, or for us to have a category, a unique category of our, uh, of our understanding of the different sections or chapters. So to begin with, you have to familiarize yourself with the table of contents. Of course, like in any books, before you scheme or scan anything, you go through first with the table of contents. So that you can, there you can see the titles of sections and chapters, okay? Then, you'll have to be familiar also with the section, chapters, and heading. So that you'll have an idea or understanding of the arrangement of the sections, chapters, and heading. Because in every section, there are chapters. And in every chapter, there are heading. And along with every heading... Not in every heading, sorry. And along with heading, there are some, or most have subheadings, okay? Then, after having the, to understand the arrangement, you also have to get to be familiar with the legal notes. So, legal notes are provided to sections, chapters, headings, and subheadings, but not not really all sections, chapters, or headings, or subheadings have these legal notes. It depends on uh, the provision that you are looking into. Some do not provide legal notes for subheading because it's already specific uh, with the section and chapter notes. Okay, so there's no need for further explanation on the heading and subheading level. So it would be better if currently you're already scanning your book. So you would have an idea of what I'm talking about as to the legal notes. Okay, because it's in the legal notes that you can see what are the inclusions and what are the exclusions provided in such section, chapter, or heading, or subheading notes. Okay? Okay. Now, you also have to be familiar with the coding systems. Of course, you have to understand the columns so how many columns are there in the book? So I think there's still seven as of now. Then you also have to be familiar with the roles of punctuations because as we mentioned earlier, the role of punctuation, the punctuations play a significant role in classifying goods. There are 
uh, to name few, there's a period, a comma, and semicolon, and colon. I think there's, there's just four in the tariff nomenclature. Then lastly, to be familiar with dash dash system and others, because it also, um, um, the dash system helps you to understand on how to, to, to correctly classify because there are description of sorry there are some products of the same description but do not really fall into that heading okay that's where the dash system will go through Kumbaga, there will be first heading ah sorry first dash or two one dash two dash three dash and four dashes these dashes have this paano ko ba sasabihin yung uh, matching level, kumbaga one dash is only comparable with another one dash, then two dashes is only comparable to other two dashes. You do not compare one dash with two dash, two dashes, or one dash with three dashes. Okay? It's, the dashes are only comparable of the same level. Okay? Later, you'll end, uh, I'll further discuss about the dashing, dash systems and others. Okay. Here, uh, the chapter, I would just like to uh, share with you the arrangement of like what we mentioned last week as to the degree of processing or manufacturing of the product. For example, uh, chapter one, we have live animals. Uh, for example, the cow, which is on the right side. Then once the skin of the cow will for further be processed or sorry uh skinned then it will be classifiable under chapter 41 which will fall under raw hides and skin and leather if you import not the cow but rather just the skin or the leather then if you further process that skin into a footwear then it will fall fall to another chapter which is chapter 64 so if you import footwear Although you, even you know that the footwear is that of a skin of cow or com, comes from a live animal, so you don't classify them under either chapter 1 or 41. Instead, to the footwear because this it's a new product and the, the byproduct of the skin of the cow. Okay? So that's for the chapter arrangement. Any question? EJ, now let's move to another example. This time we'll have a heading arrangement uh, uh, differences. Headings of some of some okay headings of some chapters are generally arranged according to the covered goods degree of processing. Okay, for example, a, we have here on your left dot uh leftmost side which is the pig iron with chapters or heading rather i would like to correct myself here this is not a chapter because it's a four four digits heading 72.01 which describes pig iron then when you further process pig iron you'll have the product this sample product of billets and billets is classifiable in 72.07 and once you further process billets, you'll have the product of iron rods, which is classifiable under 72.13. Then lastly, once you further process iron rods, you can have this product GI wire with 72.17 heading. Okay? So the heading arrangements also according generally arranged according to the degree of process, uh, degree of processing or 